For the next few moments, I have a very unique message called the prophetic decree of the watchers. It's a phrase which is found in the book of Daniel and only in the book of Daniel in the scripture. The text is Daniel chapter four and verse 18. Daniel four, verse 18. It says this, this decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it, gives kingdoms to whomsoever he will and even sets over kingdoms, look at this verse, the lowest of men. Even America doesn't always get great leaders. But in the long run, in a nation, you have to trust God that he's always in charge. Even though men think that they are. I want to, I want to tell you about Daniel chapter four, which is one of the most unique passages in the Bible. King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, as you know. King Nebuchadnezzar, if you'll read the scripture, had a dream of an image. And how many of you have ever seen the manifest program with that big styrofoam image? Head of gold, chest and arms of silver, hips of brass, legs of iron, feet of iron and clay. Anybody seen that? Raise your hand if you've seen old Nebi. We call him Nebi. And he had a dream which represented the empires of prophecy, he being the head of gold. Now, he was so impressed by the image in the dream that he had that he then builds an image and causes people to worship it when the music is played. I researched that and it's very interesting because if you'll remember, when the Hebrew boys did not worship the image, they were cast into a furnace of fire heated seven times hotter. Why would a furnace be heated seven times hotter? Answer, to melt gold. Nebuchadnezzar, they believe, had built either an image to himself of solid gold, or some believed he built a structure like an obelisk made of gold. And in other words, he being the head of gold, being the king of the nations, then makes an image, and they threw the boys, you remember, in the fiery furnace, because they would not bow down to the image that Nebuchadnezzar had made. So there was an arrogance to this king that God did not like. Now in Daniel chapter four, the king has a very strange dream. And I'm, I'm not gonna read it, I'm just gonna tell you what the dream was. In this dream, he saw this giant tree whose branches were seen throughout the earth. The birds were there. It was a very fruitful tree. Then it says this, I heard a watcher say, go down and cut down the tree, but leave the stump in the earth. Now I have here, it's made of styrofoam. Someone did a masterful job of this. Uh, a possibility of what he would have seen in this vision. As the tree is cut down, the roots remain in the earth, the stump remains in the earth. And if you'll continue to read the Bible, there is a band of iron that remains around it. And there's also a band of brass that re uh, remains around it. And if you know anything about brass and iron, the Roman empire would be the kingdom of iron later on in prophecy. And I don't wanna get into all that. This, is, this, this would make it a prophetic message, but we wanna stick to one theme. Now, as the stump remains in the the earth, the Lord warned him and said this, here's what's going to happen. You have 12 months to repent. If you do not repent in those 12 months, then I'm going to cut down your tree. Daniel's telling him this. I'm going to cut down your tree because you're not helping poor people and you're very arrogant, but you got 12 months to repent. And he says, if you don't, the angel passed around the tree seven times. You will have seven times, and that would be seven years of complete, utter destruction and removal from your throne. It's really odd to the very day, one year later in the text, Nebuchadnezzar is on the balcony overlooking Babylon, and he says to himself, is this not the Babylon the great that I have built by my strength and my power? And a watcher came down from heaven and touched him in the head, and he lost his mind. And for seven years, he had a complete, total breakdown. And if you've never read it, it's a really bizarre story. Dake says it was a disease called leucanthropy, leucos and anthropos, which means a man and a wolf. He became a werewolf. 
He was, you ever seen the werewolf pictures, the claws? The Bible says his fingernails grew out in claws. He laid in the ground. He, he uh, was in the dew of the earth. He, never, he didn't take a bath for that entire period of time. Imagine that. His hair grew long. And I mean, this guy had a seven year mental breakdown, but God said he would leave the stump of his tree remaining in the earth, although the tree itself was removed. Now, how many of you know that if the roots of something remains in the earth, tell me what will happen to it eventually? It will eventually sprout back and grow back. And at the end of seven years, the Lord allowed Nebuchadnezzar to get his mind back. And how many of you know when you've been living like a beast for seven years and your mind comes back, the first thing you're going to do is give God glory for bringing your mind back, right? And that's what he did. Now, what I want to do here is key up on a word, watchers. The book of Daniel was written in the Hebrew language with the exception of right after you read chapter two and get into from, to chapter three, all the way to chapter three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right in there is in the Aramaic language. And so this word found in Daniel that I just read to you by the decree of the watchers and by the word of the holy ones. Notice that the watchers and the holy ones. I, you got to follow me because we're, we're preaching on the decree of the watchers and I've got to lay a really good foundation for you to get this. Now, you don't see the word watchers. You see the word Word watchmen used in the Bible, but you don't see this word watchers used except right here in the book of Daniel, and it is an Aramaic word. Now, what in the world are the watchers, and who in the world are the watchers? The watchers happen to be, and you can get extra biblical literature. I don't recommend going into this, but it does exist called the book of Enoch, and the book of Enoch talks about the watchers, and the watchers are a group of guardian angels angels. They are specific angels that are assigned over specific kingdoms, nations, or empires at times, or they can actually be assigned over individuals. And these watchers make decrees. Say this with me. The watchers make decrees. So they oversee something and they watch over something. Then they report what they've heard and seen back to God in heaven. And God in heaven then begins to issue a decree. Now the word decree is very interesting here in this language because it actually means a legal sentence. In other words, what God is doing when the angels decree this and they say to the father, we have seen the arrogance of Nebuchadnezzar. We have seen how he destroyed the temple. The Jewish people are crying out because they've lost their house. They've lost the house of God. They've lost their holy city. And Nebuchadnezzar is responsible for the destruction of the holy city. And the holy ones are crying out to God. And God then in the court of heaven makes a decree. We must judge this man for the evil he has done to the people of God. And isn't it amazing that when God begins to send a judgment, he never does it until he first warns you. You missed a good place to say amen. He never destroyed Sodom till two angels showed up. He never destroyed the earth with the flood till he let Noah build an ark for a hundred years and everybody know a preacher of righteousness is warning them that a flood com is coming. Jesus never allowed Jerusalem to be destroyed until he warned them not one stone will be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. I can take you through the entirety of the Bible, whether it's the Babylonian captivity, whether it's the danger of one day ending up in Egypt, God never allows it to happen until he he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets, and he lets them know this is about to happen. Why does God give America warnings? Why does he give Christians warnings? Here's the reason why. The warning is not just to make you special because you saw it coming. The warning is not to make you a prophet because you got one dream right. The warning is to get people to get on their face before God and to repent of their sin and come clean with God so that God can stop the judgment angel from coming to bring in the destruction that's coming.
So every warning is for your benefit, but you have to listen. And Nebuchadnezzar did not listen to the warning. Now, what I want to show you now is I want to take you from earth and from the scene of this stump, and I want to take you into heaven itself. And I'm going to read to you one of the most powerful verses in the book of Daniel about what happens in heaven and what it's called. Now, I've, 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 I've taken a specific version here of scripture to read this, and I want you to listen to, to it as I read. Here we go. Daniel says, he sees this. I kept looking until thrones were placed for the assessors with the judge and the ancient of days, God, the eternal father took his seat, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame. His wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 rose up and stood before him. Where is that found in the book of Revelation? I just told you 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands of thousands standing at the throne of God in the book of Revelation ch chapter, five, chapter five and six, you see the throne room seen there, right? And watch this, stood before him. The judge was seated. Everybody say the judge was seated. The court was in session and the books were opened. Now, I am not going, I, t I told Pastor Tony in, the, in the, uh, my office in the back there that I'm not going to elaborate on this because the Lord has put me on an assignment to do a book called w Going to Battle with the Blood Covenant. And it's going to be one of the most powerful revelations I think the Lord has given me, at least in the past several years. But I'm going to read a verse to you that you've read many times, if you've ever read the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. And you probably have read over this because I read over this for 45 years and never caught this till God pointed it out to me. God says this, or John says this in Revelation 15 and verse 5. After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony was open in heaven. And out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues clothed in pure bright linen and having their chests girded with golden bands. Now I read this and I'm telling you, something jumped out at me and I wanna tell you what it is. The word temple is used talking about Solomon's temple and Herod's temple, Old Testament, New Testament. The word tabernacle is used in the Old Testament talking about the tabernacle of Moses, the tent. So we see a phrase, tabernacle, which is a reference to Moses' tabernacle. We see the word temple, which is used in Solomon's temple and in Jesus' day. And then here's the word that got me. If it would have said, and the temple of the, uh, the tabernacle, the temple was open in heaven, I would say, well, that's just the courtroom of God. That's just where God dwells. But here's what it said, of the testimony. And brother, I got on a word study and a search in Jewish literature and everything I could find on what is the temple the tent, what, what is this? The tabernacle of the testimony in heavens, and it's called the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. And I started looking very deep into this word, testimony. And I found out that in the Greek, it is a legal judicial word. Now I could stand here for the next one hour and preach on the, the, that word testimony but I'm gonna break it down in two minutes and I want you to listen to me very carefully. Daniel saw the throne room. He saw God, hair white, garment white, on a throne, taking a seat as a judge. When you get to heaven and you read the book of Revelation, John is facing God's throne, right? He sees the lamb on the right side. He sees the lamb on one side, he sees the books Seven sealed book on the right side of God. He sees the rainbow around the throne. But in Isaiah, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. This is a vision heaven. And his train filled the temple. The train is the back of a wedding gown. And it's the back of a garment of a, of a, of a priest. So God has a train, which is the back part of his garment that is so massive and so huge that it flows to a door, a set of doors. Now watch this. And that set of doors in Isaiah 6 is this building that John described in heaven. And when you open these doors, one of the things you see in Revelation eleven eighteen, 18, when the doors of the temple were opened, I'm in the Bible right now, there was seen the Ark of the Covenant. This building is so massive, I can't even tell you, size of Manhattan, 
size of Washington, D.C., size of the state of Tennessee. I can't even tell you. It's massive. But you listen to what's in there. The Ark of the Covenant is there that has the blood of Jesus on it, according to Paul in the book of Hebrews. And it is the temple of the testimony, the, the, the judicial legal witness of the records of heaven are in there. The Lamb's book of life, I always thought it was right beside the throne of God. It is not. The Lamb's book of life is in that temple of the testimony in heaven. Every book of destiny of every human being born, I could go into the book of Psalms. And here I told you I wasn't going to preach it, but I'm preaching it. I could go in the book of Psalms and show you there's a book of destiny and every person ever born has a book of destiny in that tabernacle of the testimony in heaven. You ready for this? All your deeds that God says every idle word shall you give an account of is recorded in the temple of the... You overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your... Can I go there? Now, Jonathan, I'm off the outline, son, so just so you'll know. If I overcome the blood of the, by the blood of the lamb, I would say on earth, I apply the blood, I'm born again, the blood has saved me, and because I'm under the blood, there's certain things Satan is not able to do if I shut the door on the devil. But I keep under the blood by the word of my testimony, and I overcome Satan by what I say. But think about this. There is also an Ark of the Covenant in heaven where according to Paul, when Jesus went to heaven, he sprinkled the blood on the furniture of heaven. It's in Hebrews, but not the blood of a goat and the bull, but he entered into the holy place, not made with hands, with his own blood. It's in your Bible. That ark has the blood of Jesus on it. Now, let me just tell you, my Father in heaven, that if the throne of God is here and Jesus is on the Father's right hand and he's the lawyer and the high priest of heaven, that all he has to do mm, is look behind him through the open doors of the temple of the testimony and see the ark of the covenant that has his blood on it. And when the accuser of the brethren, the devil, shows up to stand in the courtroom of heaven like he did with Job and look at Job and say, he only serves you because you blessed him. Take what he's got, he'll curse you. Then when Satan comes accusing you of a sin and it's under the blood, a high priest stands up, turns around, sees the ark and sees the blood and said, you don't have a case in this court. <laughs> you don't have a case in this court thrown out because of the blood and because of the testimony. That's how important what you say is because it's recorded in the temple of your testimony. The testimony, God Almighty, I feel the Holy Ghost. Every idle word is recorded in books with your name on it in that temple. Every work that you've done for God is recorded in books. It says the books were open. Books, 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 plural. And the men were judged from the things that are written in those books. When you repent, the angel of God writes your name in the book of life in that temple of the testimony. Let me go a step further. In the book of Revelation, do you know who comes out of that building with seven trumpets to blow? and seven angels? Do you know that in that building, who comes out of that building, that temple in heaven, with seven vials to pour out on the earth? Do you understand that all of the tribulation plagues that are set to happen on the earth, that the seven trumpets are hanging in that building, that the seven vials are hanging in that building, and men's iniquity is like a cup. And when the cup of iniquity becomes full, the Bible says that's when God judges mystery Babylon, when the cup of her iniquity is full, when the cup of iniquity of the Amorites was full, God said to Abraham, I'm going to send you in and your people in to judge the Amorites for their cup is not yet full. God left the Jews in Egypt for 400 years that all those pagan tribes would sacrifice their kids to idols, would worship idols, and their cup of iniquity would be full. And God sent Israel not just to take the promised land. You read your Bible. God sent Israel into that land to judge the nations who had perverted the law and the word of God. And they ran them out of the country. Those angels, the trumpets that will be released are in that building of the testimony. 
The ark is there. Your name is there. And here's the part that's interesting. And I, look, I'm, I'm giving you too much. I need to go on. I'm supposed to be talking about the watchers, but let me tell you this. When you get to heaven, how many of you know when you get to heaven, I don't know what we think heaven is like, but you know when you get to heaven and you stand at the throne of God, crystal, crystal ceiling, crystal floor, right? Throne of God, there's an altar, golden altar. There's seven candlesticks, 24 elders, rainbow. But behind the throne of God, that robe fills the temple when the doors are open. Oh God. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Revelation 11 verse 18. He sees the door of the tabernacle open in heaven, the temple of heaven. He sees the Ark of the Covenant. For now is come time to judge the saints and the prophets and those that fear the name of the Lord. The bema of Jesus happens at the entrance of that room. Perry Stone. Yes, sir. June 23rd, 1959. Parsons, West Virginia. Yes, sir. Angels, would you get the books for Perry Stone, June 23rd? 1959, 10 o'clock in the morning, Parsons, West Virginia. I stand at the ark and Jesus Christ stands right there and the books are open and God help you if you've lied on preachers and God help you if you've lied on churches and God help you if you've been belligerent to the Holy Ghost and God help you with your arrogant, sorry, backbiting, lying, accusing, gossiping, slander, spirit. Jesus will look at you and condemn you by your very words because it's recorded in the book of heaven in the temple of the tabernacle of God. And the angels are a part of, I'm going to get to the watchers. <laughs> the angels are a part of this very quickly. Angels direct all the tribulation judgments. Michael the archangel is the main angel involved in the great tribulation period. Daniel 12 verse 1, read it. Revelation 7. There are angels over the four corners of the earth. Revelation chapter eight, there's an angel over prayer. Revelation chapter nine, there's an angel given the key to the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 10, there's an angel over time who announces time will no longer be delayed. Revelation chapter 11, there's an angel directing the temple of heaven. Revelation 14, there's an angel coming out of the temple preaching the everlasting gospel during the tribulation. Revelation chapter 14, there's an angel over the end time harvest. Revelation chapter 14, there's an angel over fire. Come Come on, is anybody paying attention to what the preacher's saying right now? Come on, put your hands together and say, I believe. Revelation chapter 16, there's an angel controlling heat from the sun. Revelation chapter 18, there's an angel with great power that initiates judgment. Revelation chapter 20, there's an angel coming down with a key to bind the powers of Satan. I'm trying to tell you something, that they are released from the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. That's why you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, because they stand there waiting for you to use your testimony to defeat that devil who's lying on you and the devil that's shaming you and when you say I plead the blood there ain't nothing the devil can do about it hallelujah give him praise in the house I heard this many times on Saturday afternoon. I have never missed a main event in many years and this week's services were the greatest revelation of God's Word yet. Personally, the morning services released the most profound right now practical series of revelations that I've actually ever heard in my 46 years of ministry. The five messages that I preached were all new insights, some I had never seen until recently, that were birthed in the secret place of prayer. I felt impressed to emphasize lessons on defeating the strange attacks of the enemy, and I included a significant prophetic update, also teaching on the meaning of the year, 5783, and teaching the authority of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Here's the title of my five messages. The five prophetic omens coming in 2023. The prophetic decree of the watchers. The satanic ambush in the spirit-filled edge. Recovering when Satan chastises your peace how to issue a restraining order on the enemy. Tony Scott taught a word that opened up a new spiritual level and the title of the message was Living in the Highest Kingdom Life. Ron Carpenter brought the people to their feet with a powerful word, the legal side of prayer. Tommy Bates built our faith and just literally brought in the glory of the Lord with it's time to release the supernatural. 
This main event series is a solid investment in your spiritual growth, explaining battle-proven tactics, and also increases your knowledge and provides faith-building truths that unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of God in the time of the end. There are four ways in which to order. Call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD or call our Voice of Evangelism offices at 423-478-3456. Or you can order online at perrystone.org requesting the 2022 main event CDs or the DVDs. You can also mail in your order to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now, always remember to request either 22MECD for the CDs or 22MEDVD for the eight DVDs. Some DVD messages also have various pictures and scriptures to enhance the meaning of the message so that you can see and hear the word of the Lord. Now, the eight CDs are $55, the eight DVDs are $95, and we will pay the postage. If this year has been difficult, and you've been hit from different directions, I can assure you these messages will give you weapons for warfare, tools for living, encouragement in your spirit, and help build your faith. And they will help you to break the strongholds and oppression of the adversary. The prophetic update is also very powerful. Please order yours today and help keep manifest on the air. Well, as you know, you saw a brief excerpt from my message from the main event this past October that deals with the decree of the Watchers. You know, the Watchers were specifically assigned guardian angels, and they are commissioned in the court of heaven to perform certain duties based on the decrees made by the saints or by the believers on earth. Powerful teaching. I don't think I've ever dealt with this before. You can get it on CD, audio CD, all the messages, or you can get it on DVD as well. And I just want to mention that uh, Tony Scott and Ron Carpenter and Tommy Bates, these were the three best morning services I can ever re remember being in in the 35 years that we had the main event. And I'm just not saying that. I was blown away and listen to those over and over again, I think you'll do the same thing. Uh, we do want to thank each of you that partner with our ministry. It means a lot. Pam and I are going to be doing some more partners of webinars uh, as we come into the next year. We do have a partner updates that we give every month as well. We want you to be sure partners when you get to the beginning of a new month to go to our partners only website. And remember, we have a partners only Facebook page. You have to be a partner to be on there and so many other things that we're involved with. But be sure and, and, and go to that so that you can keep up with some of the inside information and some, maybe some of the special teachings that the Holy Spirit is putting uh, in our heart. I do want to also make mention uh, of our Thursday night global prayer that you can watch online from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock East Coast time. It is also put on our uh, YouTube channel so that you can watch it later if you miss it and join us in prayer and also our Tuesday night services that we have here in Cleveland, Tennessee at Omega Center International Ramp uh, every Tuesday beginning at 630. Now, if you can't get there at 630, don't worry about it. Just drive on in. It is well worth the anointing in the services. Dr. Cutshaw is directing that now and uh, he is an incredible preacher. He's one of the best preachers in this maybe in the whole state of Tennessee. He's a well-kept secret weapon in the kingdom of God as well. Well, he's, he's not secret, he's very well known, but uh, we're, we're so glad to have linked up with him. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel and don't forget to watch Manifest next week for a new program.